This exhibition is called Spontaneous Emotion into the World of Abstract Expression. This is going to be curated by Serena Mulro. So before we begin, I wanted to give you guys an outlay or an outline of um, exactly which pieces we're going to be going into and how they're going to be displayed in the gallery. So when you walk through the door, there are four walls and it's just a square room. And if you look directly ahead, you're going to see Barnett Newman's uh, Their Hero Sublimus. And that one is taking up most of the wall because that is a very large piece. And then if you go a little forward and you look to your left, you're going to see Jackson Pollock. And that's number one. That's his piece over there. And then if you look to your right, you're going to see Mark Rothko green and tangerine on red and then if you step forward and turn around and look behind you you're going to see William de Kooning's Woman in Bicycle. Then if you look straight ahead and go to the center of the room directly in the middle on a little pedestal is David Smith Hudson River Landscape. So now that you have an outlay of what we're going to be going through let's start the presentation. So the first one we're going to be looking at today is Jackson Pollock. So this piece is titled Number One. It was created in 1949. This is one of many of his drip or pour paintings where he would lay the canvas on the floor and he would splatter and pour and just make random marks from wherever he wanted while it was laying on the floor from brushes or sticks or just directly from the paint can to create this eccentric, all lines all mixed together with a um, ray of colors and, you know, abstract look. So Jason Pollock, or Jackson Pollock, was actually one of the most, like the leading artists in abstract specialism movement. And he is actually known for these strip paintings. He has many, many of them, this is one of the first ones. And uh, he was actually known as like the poster boy because of these paintings. Okay, now moving on to the next artist. And the next piece that we're going to look at is Barnett Newman. So this is uh, the Hierarchus Sublimus. This painting, or this piece, was created in 1950 to 1951. This is one of his larger scale paintings. It is 242.2 by 541.7 centimeters, so it is, it is very large. Um, as you can see, there are vertical lines running down the, running down the piece. Um, those are what he called zips. He created those zips by taking masking tape and um, putting that on the blank canvas and then painting over it and then removing the masking tape and painting the colors that he wanted on there. So that's how he got that, those zips for that look on there. Barnett Newman, his intention with um, this piece was that he wanted the viewer to stand up close to it. So you should get up close to it when you're looking at it and um, really interact with the piece. He wanted it to be as if you were meeting another person. So it was a very intimate interaction with the painting, just as it would be with another person. Okay, now moving on, we go on to the next painting. As you see um, on over here, there is Mark Rothko's Green and Tangerine on Red. This piece was created in 1956, and as you can tell, it is very literal with the name. There is a dark green rectangle on top of a bright orange or tangerine colored rectangle as well and they're all they're separate but still blended on the edges and Rothko had a way of making his paintings relate to human emotion so the dark green can symbolize darkness or fear or depression or something that has to do with human emotion that's dark or dull and on the bottom with the bright orange, it can be 
happiness or something beautiful, you know? So it's kind of like the yin and yang. He had a lot of famous paintings like this that were in this kind of color contrast with this, uh, this same design. And he just, he wanted these uh, paintings to kind of connect with human emotion and the human experience. So moving on, on the last wall that we're going to look at, we have William de Kooning's Woman and Bicycle. This piece was created in 1952 to 1953. This piece is called Woman and Bicycle because as you can see, there is a woman-like figure um, in the middle of the painting. And then on the bottom, by her legs, her lower torso, you can see that there is a bicycle shape. So that's where you can kind of get, and then just surrounding is all the different kind of colors and patterns mixed together. Um, he did a lot of these kind of pieces where he would have this woman-like figure and then mix of colors and all these um, techniques and, and splatters and all this where he just blended everything together but then still had that faint outline of a picture behind it. As you can see, you can see the woman's face and the smile and it's almost like she has two mouths. He did this intentionally and you can see the legs and you can still make out that it is a woman. Okay. Now, this is in the center of the room, so if you want to turn your attention towards that, this is David Smith's piece. This is the only sculpture or anything that you can, you know, is tangible um, in our exhibit, our exhibit today. So this is David Smith's Hudson River Landscape. He created this in 1951. He created many other um, sculptures or metal pieces like this. Um, he called them drawings in space. And as you can tell by the name, this was depicting a landscape. Um, he made it, obviously you can tell that there are some pieces in this that resemble a landscape, as you can tell on the top. There's little things that can resemble clouds and the earth on the bottom, but it is obviously abstracted and done to where he molded it to his taste. Um, this is made of steel and he welded it to make this. And that is our last piece for today. And then if you want to check out our social media, this is in uh, the Museum of Contemporary Art in Chicago. So thank you all for coming to my exhibit today. That is all I have for you. Thank you very much.